and Tarawadun, Commander. Our forward base has been established. The foolish Terrans continue to bring their forces to this platform. They will serve only to feed the Zerg Swarm if we do not destroy them quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to show you a demo of StarCraft II. Before we begin today, I'd like to remind everybody this is a demo. This is still work in progress. We've got a lot of balance work ahead of us. Nothing you're going to see here today is final. We're going to begin today with these Protoss Zealots. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft. You can see they're still armed with their powerful side blades and they're still protected by a very tough personal body shield. By your will, Kassadet Amplare! In StarCraft II, the Zealots also have a special charge ability. This allows the Zealot to close quickly with his enemies. The Zealot's charge makes him extremely dangerous against ranged defenders like these Marines. Attention, Protoss! This is Admiral Gascavir of the Terran Dominion. You will withdraw immediately, or be annihilated. Terrans are bringing in their siege tanks. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft, and they're in a classic Terran position, using that high ground against us. They're shelling our zealots from range, forcing our zealots to go the long way around, and you can see our infantry are just taking a pounding as they try to approach this Terran position. They just can't withstand all of that heavy Terran firepower. In order to attack a Terran position like this, that's so well defended, we're gonna to need to bring in another new Protoss weapon of war. After the destruction of Iron and the events of Brood War, the Protoss have been forced to adapt. They created these, these are the Immortals. They have a special type of Protoss shield. It's a hardened shield that activates only when the Immortal is struck by a very powerful attack. You can see the hardened shields are activating now, and they're absorbing most of this Terran fire. This makes the Immortal the perfect choice to assault this kind of defended Terran position. Terrans are sending in their Reapers. This infantry unit is armed with two pistols and uses a jump pack to avoid different types of terrain. Their small pistols don't activate the hardened shields of the Immortals. This makes the Reaper the perfect choice for countering these powerful Protoss troops. This kind of fast, bloody raid something the Reapers really excel at. You can see how powerful they can really be hunting down slow-moving units on the field of battle. In addition, the Reapers can use their jump packs to be very effective base raiders. Once enemy forces are inside a Protoss base, one of the first things we'll often go for is our pylons. And with our pylon down, our photon cannons go offline, making us vulnerable to continue to attack. Fortunately, we have some new weapons. The Protoss can use the phase prism to create a power field anywhere they wish. You can see with our photon cannons back online, these Reapers have no choice but to run for cover. In addition to a number of new units, the Protoss also have access to some new mechanics. Protoss can use Warp In to teleport units anywhere they want into pylon power. You can see here we've created some Stalkers. This is a new type of specialist Protoss Dark Dragoon. 
It's not very tough, but it does have a powerful weapon. In addition, it has a special blink ability that allows it to teleport a short distance anywhere it can see. This allows the stalker to avoid certain types of obstacles. And it also makes the stalker very potent at chasing down fleeing enemy forces. Zerg forces detected. Multiple contacts closing in on our position. The Zerg have arrived sooner than we expected. You can see they're using their Nidus worms here to create a beachhead, sending Zerglings against us. You'll also notice that we're using our Stalkers here to blink away from these Zerglings. This is an example of how a skilled player can use the Stalker's blink ability to great advantage. Unfortunately, there's simply too many Zerglings for our Stalkers to survive. In order to deal with a Zerg infestation of this magnitude, we're going to need to bring in some additional reinforcements. Now we've shown you how you can use the phase prisms to create a power field anywhere you wish, as well as warp in. These two mechanics can be used together to create a large army anywhere on the battlefield. We are the blades of ire. see StarCraft is still a game where large armies battle against large armies. Our upgraded zealots can hold the line here for a short time, but in order to really survive against this many Zerglings, we're going to need to bring in some additional firepower. These are the Colossus. They're powerful robotic units that can use their long legs to step up and down cliffs. In addition, they have a powerful beam that sweeps backwards and forwards, able to do large amounts of damage to small swarming units like these Zerglings. This makes the Colossus the ideal support unit for this group of Zealots. have developed many new weapons, the Zerg have continued to evolve. These Zerglings are mutating into Banelings. These small suicidal creatures are filled with explosive chemicals and corrosive acids. Makes the Banelings very potent against zealots that have no defense and even dangerous against the mighty Colossus. You can see our last Colossus here is forced to run, try to get to high ground in order to survive. Colossus is using our new IK system to step up and down this cliff. It's just one example of the new types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II to make the game more dynamic. Now, while the Colossus is very dangerous against ground targets, it's much more vulnerable to an air counterattack. This swarm of mutalisks 